You know, when, you, when you're breathing under a mask and your microphone's under the mask with you, it makes a lot more noise than you would expect. So, good morning. I'm glad that you're with us. What a blessing it is to be together again and, and know that God is present as well. Uh, thank you for joining us, whether you're in person, or thank you for joining us if you're online today as well. We're glad to have you here um, in our worship. Our order of worship is outlined for you in the worship folder. We'll be following that. Today, we're beginning um, a short little emphasis on stewardship. And so we'll be talking about that in our service this morning. Um, you w I'll make some announcements after church, but I'm going to point, point you to this right away. In your bulletin, you'll notice the, the green sheet, which would be a pledge or promise sheet. Uh, we'll be talking about that after church. There are extras on the back table if you lose one. Um, and we're going to be talking about our time and talents um, sheets uh, as well. Uh, we have those out, but we have something new this year, and you can get to it uh, and fill it out online as well. So we'll be looking forward to that, uh, the announcement and more detail about that after church today. Um, one more thing to tell you about, um, Catherine isn't here today, um, but she's not playing hooky from us. Uh, so Catherine is in Chicago at our university. Uh, they have part of their program is they have a mid-year review conference. Um, and so her and she has three classmates um, who are on internship, and of course her professor, and they're, they're uh, meeting this week. She'll be gone all week. So if you need something, um, you're going to have to come to me instead of her this week, and we'll see how it is. But we're praying for her uh, and her time um, in Chicago that she is safe and comes back refreshed and energized by it. Okay? I think that's all the introduction remarks I have right now. Before we get started, stand up, turn around, wave at one another. God bless you for being here today. We're going to remain standing, um, and we'll begin our service this morning. So let's begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear the word and the promise of God. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to continue by singing together our first hymn, We Praise You, O God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray to the Lord. Almighty and everlasting God, mercifully look upon our infirmities and stretch forth the hand of your majesty to heal and defend us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We'll continue our service now with the scripture readings selected for this morning. Our first lesson is from Jonah 3, 1 through 5 and 10. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey. And he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth, from the greatest of them to the least of them. When God saw, God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he had said would, come to, would do to them, and he did not do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson is from 1 Corinthians verse 7 verses 29 through 31. This is what I mean, brothers. The appointed time has grown very short. From now on, let those who have wives live as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those that buy as though they had no goods, and those that deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the for the present form of the world is passing away. This is the word of the God, of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Alleluia verse. Gospel, Mark 1, 14 through 20. The, Glory to you, O Lord. Uh, now, after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea. For they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little further, he saw James and the son of Zeb Zebedee and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending the nets. And immediately he called to them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. And we'll continue by singing our next hymn together.
grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I mentioned at the beginning of the service that we're going to spend several weeks talking about stewardship. So our Bible passage for today is not one of the readings we already heard. Instead, it comes from the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 16. Let me read it out loud. Jesus is speaking. He says, One who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much. And one who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. If then you have not been faithful in the unrighteous wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. This is the word of the Lord. Now, when we talk about stewardship right away, we, we tend to kind of clench our fists and steal ourselves for, for what's to come. But if we want to really start talking not about money, but about stewardship, well, you know where we have to begin. We have to begin at the beginning. In fact, we go all the way back to the beginning of Scripture and the first words in the Bible. You, you probably could say it with me. In the beginning, God. And those are the first four words that we have in Scripture. In the beginning, God. And, and at heart, that's what the whole beginning is all about. That's what makes it all up. Everything begins, starts, and continues with God. God is the source of all that exists in the world. And God is the author and perfecter of life, of faith, and of the faithful life as well for you and for me. You see, because we know in the beginning, God, it, it seems like we should be able to know all the other answers, all the other right answers to the questions. You know, God is the master of our life. We know that. Now let's move on and talk about something else. But there's a problem, obviously. I mean, you and I, we're people of a fallen nature living in a sinful world. And even though we can say that, we don't always live it out in our lives. I mean, who is the master of our lives? In reality, it often depends on when you're asking that question, doesn't it? Is it God or is it something else? We know the right answer in our minds. We know the right answer up here. We've been around long enough to have heard it and memorized the words that we want to say. But what we practice, sometimes it's a different answer altogether. Because you see, at heart, like Adam and Eve before us and all who would follow them, we, we tend to put lesser gods on the thrones of our hearts and offer our loyal attention to them. Sometimes, of course, we don't realize this is happening. Sometimes it's our own deliberate, willful, rebellious choice to make it happen. Sometimes, like Paul would say before us in Romans, I do not understand what I do, for what I want to do I do not do, but what I hate I do. No man can serve two masters. Either will he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. And sometimes you and I go down that path knowing exactly what we're going to say and do. Knowing exactly who we will be serving. And, and when we do, it's often ourselves. But how do we respond to that? We go back to the beginning, don't we? In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God who created the heavens and the earth has also lovingly and merciful called you and me to be his in the cross. We go back to the beginning. In the beginning, God has begun in us the fire of faith. 
calling us to be his own sons and daughters through the water of holy baptism and making us his own. In the beginning, God has poured upon you and me the gift of his Holy Spirit. And because he has done that, that means we really do have God at the center of our lives. Not because we put him there, not because we made the right choice, but because God comes to us. See, everything is begun, continues, and is completed by God, in God. And so where do we start? Jesus says this, whoever can be trusted with little can be trusted with much. See, in stewardship, our, our stewardship of little has a lot to do with our stewardship of much. And when we think of being trusted with much, we usually know what we're talking about or what we think about. Because when we think about being trusted with much, we usually think of the money and the times and the talents. But that's not much in God's eyes. What's much in God's eyes? It's the sure hope of salvation that God gives to us in Jesus Christ. All the other stuff is little. All the other stuff is second tier, third tier. It's salvation. It's eternal life. It's the faith that he created that burns even now in your hearts and your minds. That's what's much. That's what makes all the difference. That's what God gives to you and to me directly by his mercy and grace. Remember, being trustworthy in the little things, that makes us, trains us to be trustworthy in the big things. Being trustworthy in the little gifts of time and ability and resources help us grow by grace to be trustworthy stewards of the true riches of his kingdom. The keys of the kingdom forgiving others, and being forgiven by God. See, how we use our, our time, talents, and our money, it, it, that's not, that doesn't make us faithful. But being faithful is all about how we use our time, talents, and money. Being trustworthy with the little things, as Jesus would say in our gospel lesson. Taking a, a godly view of the gifts that he's given to us, where it comes from and what it's for. In the psalm, he writes, the earth is the Lord and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. So at its heart, stewardship isn't about your money or your time or the places and ways that you volunteer. Stewardship is about knowing in the beginning God. God is the source of all things. God continues to be the center of our life of faith. God continues to pour out on us his riches. Not measured in little green pieces of paper, but his riches of love, of forgiveness, of acceptance, of mercy, of presence. We honor God by keeping him first in our life. Keeping him first in our life means all those other things, they're not first at all. They can no longer ever be first in our lives. We honor God by keeping our material goods in perspective. We honor God by recognizing and that our finances are temporary and not worrying about them. We honor God by making him a priority in our life. We honor God by remembering where it all starts. In the beginning, God. He is the beginning, he continues, and he will be after the end. For his love passes all understanding. Amen. And may this grace of God, this peace that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Having heard God's word, we continue by confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. If you're able, would you stand and join with me? 
we confess our faith to God. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll continue our worship with our prayers together. In your bulletin, you've received our prayer list so that you can take this home and keep it for your daily devotions at home. We have a couple of additions or changes to make to it. Um, in our prayers today, we remember uh, Jim Cuvin, who is undergoing some medical challenges, and we pray for Jim and for Kathy. Uh, Marilyn Schneider has been on our prayer list. Uh, we pray for her now because she has been admitted to the hospital, tested positive with COVID, and is also undergoing a surgery, and we ask that God would be with her. And under those grieving, uh, we pray for the family of Bruce Tober, um, member of our congregation. Bruce passed away actually in the end of December after Christmas, but we just found out about it this week. And, and so we pray for the family, the Tober family. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you desire not the death of a sinner, but that all would repent and believe in the gospel. In the epiphany of your Son, your time of salvation and your kingdom have come near. As this world passes away, give us faithfulness and urgency. Give us uh, to the ability to proclaim to the world the gospel of our God. Help us remember where it all began with you. And even as you called Simon Peter, Andrew, James, and John to follow you and made them fishers of men, so send us out to share your love, your care, your mercy with those who are all around us in our time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of love, deliver the sick from their illnesses, give relief to the suffering. Help the troubled to know peace of mind and be with the grieving and those in their final days. Guide all healthcare professionals to serve those in need and provide them with protection from illness or despair and give patience to those who must bear with their infirmities or disabilities. We pray that you would be with all that have been and currently are infected by the COVID virus. Grant them healing and health and recovery and give all of our leaders wisdom and compassion as they lead us in this trying time and help us care for those who are all around us. Hear us especially today, O oh Lord, for Lou and Kathy, Brian and Bill, Danielle, Steve, Ray, Mary and Don, with Gary and Pastor David, with Michael and Jack, with Jolan and David and Bob and Marlo, with Jimmy and Marie and Rebecca, for Susan and Rosemary, for James and Ruth, for Pastor Townsend and Leah, for Samantha and Ron. Be with Max and Miranda, with the Williams family and Bob, with Mike and Snell and Marlene, uh, with Marilyn and Jim, and with all those that we name before you in our own hearts and minds. Dear Lord, be with them. In your mercy and grace, grant them health and healing, strength and recovery. But above all, remind them of your presence and assure them that you are always a part of their life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, deal graciously with all those who mourn today. 
including the families of Pastor David and the members of Mount Calvary and Warner Robins, the family of Mary Jo, uh, the family of Norville, and the family of Bruce. In your mercy and care, remind them of your presence, assure them of your love, pour out your spirit upon them that they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us, O oh Lord, and give answer to the prayers of your people prayed in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, whom with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you are one God and one Lord forevermore. Amen. Hear us as we pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive again today the blessing that God gives to you, not just today, but every day in your life. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let's continue by singing our closing hymn together. I'm glad that you joined us today. What a blessing it is to have, uh, have you with us, uh, whether you're here in person or if you joined us on video. Thank you. I praise God for you being here today. Um, a couple of things to remind you before I let you go. First, we want to celebrate with those who are celebrating with us today. So birthdays this week would be Walter Krauss. Catherine, our DCE intern's birthday is this week. Margaret Ringer and Dick Schneider. Uh, let's clap and wish them the, blast, the best. What a blessing it is to celebrate with them. I'm, I'm, see, I'm channeling my inner Catherine here, and I've got all this stuff. Um, we're going to start out. So, Catherine did, so Catherine's gone this week. She's at the, 
the mid-year conference. She'll be here next Sunday, uh, but will be out of the office most of the week. She didn't trust me, so she gave me her clipboard list. Uh, so I'm going to channel my inner Catherine here for a minute. Um, in your bulletin, the mission of the month form, uh, the pink paper, uh, this is the last week to bring any of your items for Circle of Love. Remember, Circle of Love is the local ministry that works with victims of domestic violence or abuse. Um, so look at your sheet that has the things that you can bring. Items can be brought in and left in the bins out in front. Uh, starting next Sunday, we'll be looking to what our next project is going to be. Um, don't forget the Red Letter Challenge is coming up. I'm really excited about this. So the Red Letter Challenge, just to remind you, during the 40 days of Lent, we're going to be focusing on the theme of Jesus' own words in the Bible. It's where the words red letter come in, because in the old Bibles, they used to be uh, all his words were written in red ink. So uh, the red letter challenge will be for adult Bible class on Sunday mornings. We'll focus on them during the worship on Sunday mornings, but also there'll be daily devotion Bible studies that you will uh, can complete uh, during the week as well. We have the books that are available. There, there's a sign-up sheet on the back table. Um, that's basically to make sure that if you're coming and you want a book, we have enough to give you so that we don't just order a, a huge amount. There are also envelopes back there. If you would like to defray the expense of the church, you can, there's a price on the envelope, and you can put an envelope in the offering with money for your book. Um, but if we, we've handed, I know Catherine's handed out some books already for those that we've already um, signed up, so check your file folders in the narthex. And if you haven't signed up for a book yet, do that today so that we can get them to you on time. This all begins on Sunday, February 14th. One, two, three weeks from today, if I have my calendar right in my head. Um, so that's when we're going to kick everything off, and it'll go through the, the month of Lent, or the season of Lent in the church. Okay, uh, because Catherine is gone this week, There'll be no women's Bible class on Tuesday. Uh, we'll take a week off and we'll resume the following week. There will be a Bible class on Wednesday. Now, though that was off last week because I was attending the funeral of Pastor uh, Brighton from Warner Robins. Um, but we are planning to resume that this Wednesday. And, and you can join us for that. Um, we have a couple of other things. Oh, before I get there, let me talk about this. So we've started our stewardship driver campaign. In your bulletins, the green sheets, are your promise or pledge forms for the coming year. Um, we will have a box out in the entryway beginning next Sunday. So these are for you to take home, to pray about, uh, to talk to one another about if you're uh, a couple, and, and then submit, tear off the bottom or cut the bottom off. It's not perforated. Um, cut it off. You can put it in an envelope and bring it back again and put it in the box out in the narthex next week. Um, this is really uh, a practice that we do for our benefit, to, to make us think through things, uh, not so much for the church. Obviously, um, we're not basing a budget on it because stewardship is not about getting money for things. It's about God calling us to be his own and our response to his call. Um, also, we have a time and talents um, inventory like we did last year. This year, it will be available. I do have paper copies available, but it'll also be available online if you'd like to fill it out online. And what that means is just checking boxes uh, that are on the form. Um, I see it didn't make it into the bulletin. Look for it in an email, the link, or in the bulletin next Sunday, and, and you'll have the link to find it online if you would like to do that. 
If you prefer to do it on paper, you can pick up one of the paper copies and put that in the box next week as well. So the green are the promise sheets or the pledge forms. The white trifold will be the, the time and talents, or you can do the time and talent part online as well. Uh, and so that'll be taken care of. Okay, now, Margaret and Terry, where are you? One of you is talking. Okay, uh, would you come up here so you can use a microphone, please? Thank you, Terry. Hold it right up to your mouth. So, that's new. Yeah, that's new. <laughs> uh, so, Margaret and I have led quite a few um, trivia nights in the past, but always in person. Uh, never on Zoom. In fact, as far as I know, it's never been tried in human history to, <laughs> to do this on Zoom. So you can be a part of something very epic uh, if you join us uh, and if it works. Um, so the, the date is February the 8th, no later than 7 p.m. It's a Monday night. Uh, the week before the 8th, you'll get a, an email from Catherine that has a link in it. So all you have to do is open the email, click the link, and you will be admitted to the meeting. You don't have to download any software or anything like that. Uh, be there no later than 7 o'clock. We're going to see how many people are there. And Catherine performs some magic and puts people in teams. And each team has its own chat room. So you will get a question. You will be able to go to your chat rooms and talk about the question, come up with one answer for your team, and then we'll, we'll play, for, I guess we're playing for bragging rights. So, uh, but it, it's, it's gonna be fun, so please join us. Okay, I'll take that from you, Terry. So Feb Monday, February 8th, is that the date, Terry? Um, we're at the Board of Fellowship, it's gonna be a fun night, online, trivia night, uh, you can sign in, join us from wherever you are, and, and be a part of it. Uh, first ever in the history of the world, according to Terry. So uh, you can remember that date. It'll be the Monday, the day after the Packers win the Super Bowl this year. So, uh, Okay, uh, Pam, you're next. You have something about the blood drive. Please come up here. Show your smiling face to the camera and the microphone. Yeah. Hey, y'all. So we've done two blood drives now here at the church that has been so well received by the community that the Red Cross has said, you know what, y'all are really good. Can we do this more frequently? And of course we said, sure. So February 16th, we have another blood drive scheduled. If you didn't get an appointment last time because all our appointments booked up, now's your opportunity. You can go online now and um, sign up and get your appointment. The other thing is we're, again, looking for volunteers to come in for an hour or two. Uh, we check them in. It's very simple. We take their temperature. We check them on the, in on the computer, and then we just chat uh, while they're hanging out and waiting for their appointment. So um, this is like, this is strong to my heart. This is something that's so important. and when the people that have volunteered and you've seen the people from the community coming in, everybody is so thankful that we're doing this. So this is a great opportunity of outreach to our community and to get people to know us and maybe to come, come visit and, and see what we're all about. So um, you can email me if you'd like to volunteer. Harold? Go for her. Harold? I can't tell where. No, yeah. Not, okay. Um, I got your email, but it, my email response keeps bouncing back. So come see me after church and I'll tell you okay so thank you thank you so yeah the red cross blood drives obviously this isn't calling you to give twice as much you can only give what you can but they feel that there's <laughs> i get the re we get to suck the rest of your life out of you um but this is a chance to to serve our community and and the location they feel is so good remember all the blood drives actually take place at the community center um, and it's worked out really well. So thank you to Pam, who's kind of headed up this, this ministry area. And thank you for all of you. What we need are volunteers to, 
to make this work and to go well. Okay? I think I'm out of things finally to say. I don't know how that happened, but um, thank you for coming today. God bless you this week. I look forward to seeing you again next Sunday morning, uh, or you can join us Wednesday for Bible class. God bless you. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. My mask got stuck. <laughs>